Howdy! In this video, we are going to talk about surface modifications with you. However, first we need to discuss the surface properties that are being changed. Surface properties are essentially a characteristic of the surface. We will focus on three main properties. Hydrophobicity, surface charge, and topography. When discussing surface topography, we are talking about the outer terrain of the device. Think about the roughness. Does the surface have a lot of peaks and valleys, or is the surface smooth? Also, think about the steric hindrance. Does the surface have a lot of debris that pushes proteins away? Proteins. Hmm, those seem important. In fact, proteins are the reason we are making this video. When talking about surface modifications, a huge goal is to modify protein absorption. What is protein absorption? It is the attachment of the protein to a solid surface. Again, what is the goal of many surface modifications? To modify protein absorption. Now, with a few short demonstrations, we can examine hydrophobicity and topography and their effects on proteins absorbing to the medical device surface. In this demonstration, we will show the effects of surface hydrophobicity versus hydrophilicity when the surface is interacting with water. First, let's note that the surface of the rain boot is very hydrophobic, whereas the cotton swab is very hydrophilic due to many OH groups. So let's see what happens when the rain boot interacts with water. We see with the rain boot that when the water was poured on it, the water rolled right off because it was unable to interact with the surface. Let's see what happens with the cotton swab. Whereas with the cotton swab, the water is absorbed directly into it because the hydrophilic surface allows for interaction with the water. Gee, that was interesting. Let's talk about an ideal surface modification now. An ideal modification would meet the following four requirements. One, the added layer should be thin. This would allow the modification to have a minimal effect on bulk properties. Two, the modification should be resistant to delamination. This requirement is crucial for many cardiovascular devices which endure shear stress from blood flow. Three, the modification should be simple and robust. This promotes its commercialization. Basically, the modification should be easy to create and implement. Four, the modification must be stable. These requirements all describe an ideal modification, but let's talk about the real stuff. There are three main categories, physical, chemical, and biological. We will focus on physical and chemical. There will be four main modifications that we are going to explore. We will first explore two chemical ones, plasma treatment and self-assembled monolayers. Then we will explore two physical ones, Langmuir Blodgett films and solution coatings. Plasma treatment is a chemical modification, meaning it forms strong covalent bonds with the surface. But wait one minute, what is plasma? Is it the fourth state of matter? Not exactly. Plasma is defined as a dissociated gas composed of positive and negative ions, electrons, and some neutral molecules. During plasma treatment, electrons eject from the sample surface, the cathode, and bombard the gaseous molecules to form ions and radicals. Again, the gaseous molecules are bombarded to form ions and radicals. Let's look at the schematic below to visualize this procedure. The chamber that holds the sample is connected to a gas inlet. A power supply connects the anode to the cathode. The sample is the cathode. 
The electrons from the cathode bombard the plasma gas to yield the ions and radicals. These ions and radicals are used to react with the sample's surface. The process continues as electrons still flow from the sample and positive ions continue to flow to the sample. Let's look at another schematic for the effects of plasma treatment. When methyl groups on the surface undergo plasma treatment from oxygen gas, hydroxyl groups come and replace them. The surface goes from hydrophobic to hydrophilic. But wait, when the surface contacts air again, the methyl groups are restored. What a waste. This restoration of the hydrophobic surface is called hydrophobic recovery. What should we do to prevent hydrophobic recovery? Actually, if the sample is stored in water, the hydrophilic groups will remain on the surface. What samples can we plasma treat though? Can you plasma treat a metal? Yes. Can you plasma treat ceramics? Yes. Can you plasma treat a polymer? No. Just kidding, you can. When would we want to plasma treat a sample? To answer that, consider how plasma treatment can modify protein absorption. Plasma treatment can replace methyl groups with hydroxyl groups, making the surface more hydrophilic. How does a hydrophilic surface affect protein absorption? Hydrophilic surfaces yield less protein absorption. When would we want less protein absorption? How about with devices that need to be hemocompatible, like heart valves and vascular grafts? Again, plasma treatment makes the surface more hydrophilic and thus produces less protein absorption. Now let's talk about SAMs. No, golly gee whiz, not that SAM. SAMs are self-assembled monolayers and are the second chemical modification that we will be discussing. SAMs are amphiphilic. Ampho what? Amphiphilic. They contain hydrophobic and hydrophilic portions. It's like magic. SAMs are used for materials that have hydroxyl groups on their surface, such as glass and metal oxides. The actual SAM contains an attachment group, a long hydrocarbon chain, and a functional head group. Let's examine the chemical nature of each SAM group. The attachment group is hydrophilic, and it is thermodynamically favorable for the attachment group to form covalent bonds with the hydroxyl material surface. The long hydrocarbon chains are hydrophobic and interact with each other via van der Waals forces. Finally, the functional head group is either hydrophilic or hydrophobic. The functional head group serves two purposes. It modifies hydrophobicity and it serves as a site for further chemical reactions. So, once again, this modification can modify protein absorption. So why in the world would we want to use a SAM? First, SAMs have the advantage of ease of formation. Since they are covalently bonded to the surface, SAMs have great chemical stability. For example, they can withstand shear stress from blood flow. Finally, SAMs can have a variety of functional groups and attachments, which allow great diversity for these modifications. To conclude with SAMs, no, not that SAM, get that dang thing out of here. Okay, once again, to conclude with self-assembled monolayers, the goal is to create a molecularly smooth surface and attach bioactive molecules. Now let's talk about physical modifications, meaning these modifications are non-covalent. Our first physical modification is langmuir blodgett films. langmuir blodgett films are analogous to SAMs, but are weaker. Hence the sad face. These films also can be used to create a molecularly smooth surface and are amphiphilic. Ampho what? Amphiphilic. So how do we apply a langmuir blodgett film? Essentially, one can push the amphiphilic molecules in an orderly manner and force them to adhere onto the biomaterial. Now let's talk about our second physical modification, which is a solution coating. That has nothing to do with this. Get that out of here. Moving on, solution coatings are a physical modification. The biomaterial is dipped in the solution, which is typically a polymer dissolved in an organic solvent. The material is allowed to dry in order to allow the polymer coating to deposit on the material. When would we apply a solution coating? If we want to add bioactivity or we want to alter hydrophobicity. Hmm, we keep seeing this term alter hydrophobicity. What does that mean again? 
It basically means we are modifying protein absorption. Which biomaterials can solution coatings be used for? The answer is all of them. So basically, solution coating is so easy, a cat could do it. Meow. Just kidding, but seriously. Kinda. Ugh, I'm done with this. Now on to our final review of our four surface modifications that we introduced to you today. Plasma treatment, self-assembled monolayers, solution coating, and Langmuir blodgett films. We broke these modifications down into two groups. Chemical modifications, which form covalent bonds with the surface, and physical modifications, which adhere via weaker interactions. Plasma treatment and solution coating serve a main purpose of altering hydrophobicity. Whereas self-assembled monolayers and Langmuir blodgett films serve a main purpose of limiting surface roughness. Again, we see that these four modifications have overlap in their main purpose, but also can be distinguished by whether they are physical or chemical. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.